So today I'm going to talk a little bit more about asset protection for real estate. So the one of the nicest asset protection plans are limited liability companies or LLCs for short. And I want to share about how LLCs are used for real estate. So as a disclaimer, uh, please consult an asset protection attorney to help set up your personalized asset protection strategy for real estate. Remember, this is very personalized. I'm just sharing my limited knowledge on the topic based on what I've been taught by my personal asset protection attorney. If you want to use who I use, I use KKOS Lawyers uh, based in California. But I know a lot of people use something called Prime Corporate Services as well. And with both of them, you can set up a free 15-minute consultation to discuss your personalized asset protection plan. And I highly recommend that you do that. So what is an LLC? It's basically a business structure that can combine the pass-through taxation of a partnership or proprietorship with the limited liability of a corporation. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds, right? It, it makes doing your taxes very simple because it passes through. Uh, from the business into you personally so let's just say i made ten thousand dollars through my llc which holds my 20 unit apartment complex that would just pass over to me um steven nguyen on my personal tax returns but also on top of that it gives you some of the limited liability of the corporation so it's kind of the best of both worlds so typically an llc is used to hold passive income investments like real estate so if you have passive income, like holding real estate, LLC is good. Um, you don't need separate tax returns uh, for an LLC since it's passed through taxation, um, you know, assuming it's a single member LLC. So I don't have any partners. So as a result, um, it just goes straight to me. Um, it also keeps your personal assets. So let's say you have a primary residence, uh, 401k. Uh, life insurance, brokerage accounts, separate from your rental properties uh, placed in an LLC. So um, it's a form of asset protection to protect your personal assets against your tenants. So this is the easiest way for me to explain it. It's a form of asset protection to protect your personal assets against your from your tenants. Example, if a tenant slips and falls in one of your rental properties that's under an LLC, and assuming you run the LLC like a proper business, the tenant can only take whatever is in the LLC and not come after your personal assets. Let me give you an example. Let's just say a tenant slipped and fell in my 20 unit apartment complex. You know, they broke their hip and now they're trying to sue me for a million dollars. If I didn't have an LLC and I didn't run it properly, then the tenant can come after and sue me personally for the million dollars so let's just say my apartment's worth half a million so he gets half a million dollars so he gets my 20 unit apartment complex and there's still half a million dollars left over now he's going to come after me personally for half a million dollars and he might come after my personal residence my 401k my brokerage accounts my, my cash in my banks so that's at risk but if the tenant slipped and fell and let's just say it would sue me for a thousand a million dollars and the apartment is worth a million dollars or half a million, then he would just get whatever is in the LLC and then be done with it. He cannot come after me personally. So that's kind of the concept I like to use. So remember, it protects your personal assets against your tenants. The next LLC I want to talk about is the Charging Order Protection Entity. It's called COPE for short. And it's a unique type of LLC entity that can provide additional protection for the assets it holds from the owner's personal liabilities. So only some states have a COPE LLC. So the common one is Wyoming, which is what I personally use. And this will serve as the parent holding company for all your other LLCs that, that owns your real estate. So for example, I might have Steven Holding Company, and that's going to own Steven LLC 1, Steven LLC 2, Steven LLC 3. And what's nice about the COPE entity is it protects your rental properties from you. Remember, with a normal LLC, it protects you from your tenants, right? If your tenants try to sue you, it protects you from your tenants. 
but a COPE entity protects your rental properties from you. Let me give you an example. Let's just say you own a bunch of rental properties in an LLC and you got into a car accident while texting and driving. In this case, the creditors can still come after your rental properties despite them being an LLC. Remember, LLCs protect you from your tenants and COPEs protect your rental properties from you. So let's just say I was texting and driving, I ran a red light and injured a family and they want to sue me for $5 million. And they're going to take all my personal assets. And on top of that, they're going to come after my rental properties, which are held in LLCs. But if you have a COPE LLC, it will actually protect you from that situation. Keep in mind that COPE entities are for more advanced real estate investors with over $1 million in assets. So if you just own a primary residence, you're most likely not going to be owning a COPE entity. But let's just say you own you know, 90 units like myself. I do have a COPE entity. So I have a COPE uh, Wyoming holding company. And that holding company will own my LLC that holds my 26 unit apartment complex, the LLC that owns my 20 unit, the LLC that owns my single family homes, the LLC that owns my mobile home park. So this is definitely a more advanced strategy, which is why it requires a you know one-on-one -on -one consultation with a real estate asset protection attorney. And that's what I recommend for you to do. So taking a step back, uh, let's focus on the bigger picture. So the Irrevocable Living Trust will own the COPE LLC, which is the holding company. And then the holding company will own all the other LLC that own your rental properties. LLCs for out-of-state rental properties. So this hits home for me, where I live in California and I own rentals in Oklahoma and Alabama. So the LLC must be formed in the state that you own the rental property. If you live in California and own rentals in, Cal in New York, the LLC must be formed in New York and California. For California, you cannot escape the Franchise Tax Board. Believe me, many people have tried and many have failed. You will have to pay the Franchise Tax Board $800 per year in taxes for every LLC that you own even if the property isn't in California. So save yourself some heartburn and pay $800 a year. So this is where I kind of got burned, where I went a little bit LLC happy, or I have my 26 unit in an LLC, my 20 unit in an LLC, my mobile home park in an LLC, my single family homes in two LLCs, I have my holding company LLC. So I own like eight LLCs, and you times that by 800, that's $6,400 a month. So I went a little bit too happy on asset protection when in reality, that's $6,400 a month. If I were to cut my LLCs in half to four, you know, that, that'll save me $3,200 a month. And on top of that, I can use that $3,200 to buy an umbrella insurance policy. So actually what I'm working on in 2023 is to kind of consolidate some of my LLCs. So once my 20 unit is stabilized and I do a cash out refinance at that moment I'm going to transfer the title of the property from that LLC into another LLC where I own my 26 unit and then close down that LLC um, that I own for my 20 unit so that will kind of save me $800 a year and it was a little bit excessive to separate my my apartments um, so this is why it's very important to you know talk to an attorney to develop your plan you know I wasn't thinking I opened an LLC when I just could have used one of my existing LLCs um, you know, to, to, to have both my 26 and my 20 unit apartment complex. So, you know, if I'm going to do a cash out refi, I'm probably going to transfer it to the other LLC, close that one down. And if you were to sell, let's just say one of your assets at that moment, you'd close down the LLC as well. So a common question is I own an LLC and now what? The attorney that helped you set up an LLC can transfer the property ownership from your personal name to LLC that you established. So remember, transfer it from John Doe to Blue House LLC. Um, please remember to make the name of your LLC ambiguous. You know, don't use your personal name, right? Like I wouldn't make mine's Stephen Nguyen LLC. It's just too obvious. Uh, you want to make it ambiguous to create a sense of privacy. And then a great example was Blue House LLC. So just keep it something very ambiguous. Um, so you can have Blue House LLC, Red House LLC, Green House LLC, 
And, um, you know, when you have insurance, so let's just say you transfer a single family home from your personal name into an LLC, insurance will ask you to have both your name and the LLC name on the policy. So you have to reach out to your insurance agent or insurance broker and work with them for that. So, you know, let's just say I was personally on the name for my single family homes because I bought it using as a primary residence using conventional financing. But when I leave the property and move out of it and rent it out and put under LLC, um, I'm gonna have to put both my name, so Stephen Nguyen, as well as let's just say Blue House LLC under the insurance policy. So that's just kind of some housekeeping items that must be done uh, once you own an LLC. So the key takeaway from this lecture is to consult an asset protection attorney today to start your personalized asset protection plan. If you live in California like me, um, be cognizant of the fact that you're going to have to pay $800 a month to the franchise tax board as well as an annual filing fee for each LLC. So do not go too crazy with LLCs and you can just always add on more LLCs later. You know, I made too many out the gate and I owe the franchise tax board, you know, $6,400 a, a year. So I went a little bit too crazy. So I'm actually working on kind of backpedaling uh, to own fewer LLCs.